In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. We're number one. We talk about unconventional training and its value and benefits for the average person. So whether you want to burn body fat or build muscle, um, unconventional exercises and unconventional methods of training can provide tremendous, tremendous value for you. Um, now, this episode is brought to you by one of our sponsors, Paleo Valley. Now, Paleo Valley has a lot of uh, amazing organic supplements and food products. Our favorites are the meat sticks. They're grass-fed. They taste good. No joke, they're the best-tasting meat sticks we've ever had. High protein, of course, no carbohydrates. A great, easy, healthy snack. Now, because you listen to Mind Pump, you get 15% off the meat sticks and any other product that they have. Here's what you do. Go to paleovalley.com. That's P-A-L-E-O valley.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 15 and get 15% off your first order. Uh, also all month long, MAPS Strong is 50% off. This is a very effective fat burning, muscle building, unconventional workout type program. It's very, very effective. It's strong man inspired. You could do this with the home gym. You don't need lots of fancy equipment. Um, it is pretty intense, so make sure you've got a decent level of fitness before starting it. Here's how you get the 50% off discount. Go to mapsstrong.com, that's M-A-P-S-S-T-R-O-N-G.com, and use the code STRONG50. That's S-T-R-O-N-G-5-0, no space, for the discount. When's the last time you guys followed um, Strong? Did you guys ever follow that? Was it it's been a minute, but I'm going to be honest, probably one of my favorite uh, programs we I have. I pull from that program probably more than I pull from any other of our programs. I, it, it was, the you exercises. Know, it's I, just so different. I love it. That's the thing. It's like, and you, I even even as an experienced trainer, um, you know, I always learn new things. And the thing that I learned from that was at how um, how effective um, and impactful unconventional type training can be for the body, especially if you're somebody who's done it conventionally for so long. Yeah. It makes a huge difference, you know, just to just well, to mix it up a little bit. To me, that's the message. The message is to the majority, really. If you were somebody who trained like a strong man, this is less valuable of an episode. But I think if you're like any of us who trained in a gym for most all of your career, uh, these exercises were just, uh, they weren't favorable. Very few people were doing them. I never saw mm -hmm. half of the movements that are in strong, I'd say you never saw anybody do in the gym. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until, and I'll, I'll be honest, very insecure to try and try one. I mean, here I am, a they're, they're, they're 20, they're different. Yeah, 25, 26 year old personal trainer, and I'm a trainer, so people are watching the way I work out. Um, I'm supposed to have quite a bit of experience at that point. I have almost 10 years of experience of lifting under uh, under my belt. So the last thing I want to do is look like a fool trying some exercise that I've never done, never really seen anybody do inside the gym. And so I really avoided a lot of those movements for a long time. And this, uh, I, you know, I'd say when Justin and I started hanging out together before Mind Pump and I started training over at his gym, get a lot of uh, really, really top-notch trainers in that, in that gym. In fact, I remember working, that was the first time I'd ever been to a gym where I actually saw eight different trainers training clients on the floor and all eight of them were doing exercises that I may have never taught somebody before. Mm, yeah, you had all kinds of different specialists in different directions, whether it was kettlebells, whether it was sports specific, you know, like strongman com comp competing, uh, powerlifting. But yeah, it was very interesting and everybody was at the top of their game. So yeah, I, I definitely loved that environment and took a lot from it. And, you know, speaking to the, the strongman uh, type of lifts and, uh, you know, what what really I've I've noticed from like strongman training is how they can not just lift heavy weights, but how they can move quickly with heavy weights. Yes, yes. And how they can move around, uh, you know, fully loaded like that well, is is something totally different. Well, unconventional training gets its name unconventional mainly because it's not what is considered mainstream ways of working out. Really, because the reality is, if you go back in time, unconventional training was conventional. That's the way people. <laughs> right, right. That's the way people worked yeah, you go out. Like hundreds of years, right? Yeah, you know, you go back to the, when when people were yeah. first started working out. Was like, oh, this is hard. Let's do something else. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, a good example. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a good example. Right, a farmer walk is a good example. Farmer walks, uh, you almost never see anybody do them in the gym, probably because it's not like a body part specific exercise, and so I never really did them myself. 
um, once I implemented them in my routine on a regular basis, I couldn't believe uh, the results I was getting from that exercise. It's now become conventional for me, right? Now it's yeah. something that I include all the time. So there's a lot of value in doing things different from how you always do them. Now, the first big reason for this is the novelty. It's different. And the body responds really, really well to different. Now, it's not so well that you always change things all the time. So you like you're, you're like you're shaking dice to figure out your workout. Uh, but when you do something for long enough and you're good at something and you're used to something, and then you just switch it just a little bit, it gets your body to respond kind of like it did when you first started working out. Well, I think fast it, gains. I think that's because it's not uh, a little bit, Sal. Because you know somebody hearing that goes like, well, I mean, my workouts are novel. Uh, last time I did arms, I did skull crushers, and this yeah. time I did tricep pushdowns. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? That's that's novel, and that's yeah. different. I rotated my wrist. Right. So, and, and and this is important though to have the, the to explain this because mm -hmm. I I fell in that camp. You know, I fell in the camp of like, you know, I was I was doing novel things and you know confusing my body every time I trained and doing different exercises. But unconventional training or strongman type lifts, when you talk about snatch grip deadlifts, zercher squats, uh, circus presses, you start talking about movements like that, they're, they're so novel that the signal that it sends to your body is so much louder than you varying you know, arm exercises. Totally. It's a brand new stimulus. Right. Yeah. I remember the first time I experienced that was as a, I was either 15 or 16 years old. I've already been lifting weights for about a year or two. And, uh, you know, like any teenage boy, one of my goals was to build my arms, right? And the biceps, of course, that's the show muscle. If anybody ever asks you to flex your muscle, that's the one that you flex, even though you have hundreds of them all over your body. I had somebody flex their quad for me one time. Yeah, let me show you. Did you really? He's like, Ugh. It's like what? Weird. Who does that? Weird. <laughs> we had to make fun of that guy. Yeah, so I was, you know, like most people when they first start with guys, when they first start working out, it's like arms are super important. So I was always doing arm exercises, trying to get my biceps to grow, whatever. Oh yeah, I was 15 because I had bought myself a BMX type bike. And, you know, back in those days, it was real popular. You get these BMX bikes and you you jump curbs and you make ramps and do all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And when you're first learning how to bunny hop or jump, you just yank on the handlebars. Like you're just ripping them up trying to get the, the bike to move because you don't know the skill, the technique of bunny hopping or whatever. So I was doing this all day long. And it took me like a week to figure out how to bunny hop. But during that whole week, I'm yanking on the bar trying to get my tires to come up off the ground. And I kept track of my bicep measurements as I'm doing this, you know, except, except working out at the same time. My biceps grew. Now, my <laughs> workouts didn't change. It was because, and I had pieced it together, it's because I was yanking on those handlebars. Yeah. It was unconventional. It was novel. And my body responded as a result of it. So this is what happens to the body when you change things up, especially if you're stuck in a rut or doing the same thing. Unconventional training provides that novelty that the body just sends a yeah. loud adaptation signal. If it's unfamiliar with it, and there's lots of different techniques to kind of provide uh, new stimulus that your body will respond to, and one of them is that sort of a fast twitch movement that, uh, you know, your body really uh, has to kind of figure this out quickly. It has to be able to apply force like right at that moment. And, and, you know, your muscle changes as a result of that. It's a different type of muscle fiber that you're activating with this. And so, you know, to add some elements of power in there and speed, uh, you know, your body is really going to respond, uh, you know, completely differently than it would just, you know, in your seated position type of machine, uh, you know, hypertrophy set. Totally. I find any exercise that is like this novel or this skill base too, you just get more bang for your buck for that also because oh, yeah. of the amount of like you do if you've never done a circus press before, uh, the first time you do it, uh, you know maybe you have some natural shoulder strength and and you get up a decent amount of weight, but there's a lot of technique. There's that, a lot of room to go. Right. There's a lot of room to improve, and that's where a lot of these results come from. First time you ever do a zercher squat or a snatch grip deadlift, the very first time. You probably don't pull nowhere near what or do as much weight as you possibly can because it is such a skill based movement. Yeah, those are two barriers right there. You're right. talking about it. There are some high skill type movements that uh, you do have to learn and you have to learn uh, with lighter weight. And so there's two big things where the ego kind of has to be checked. And then also, like, you really have to study like mm -hmm. the mechanics of it and try and duplicate so you don't hurt yourself. Right. And then the, the, there's another part too, which is when something's new, it's a new movement. There's a lot of central nervous system adaptation going right, on as right. well. And when you get a lot of central nervous system adaptation going on, 
It also tends to come paired with muscle. It tends to come paired with muscle growth and strength. Those neurological adaptations are just as important, if not more important, than the muscular adaptations. And so that novel stimulus, the fact that you're doing a, an unconventional exercise, something that is really different from what you're used to, you're getting a very loud central nervous system signal that's saying, hey, we need to start routing neurons and start making connections. We need to start developing the central nervous system muscle, which then talks to the, the, the physical muscle. And so you just get better results. Now, the next one is, uh, uh, this one's an obvious one, I think, which is that unconventional exercises or the ones that I, I think are considered unconventional today, they just make you more strong in a functional way. Mm -hmm. You know, like in, in a real world way. Well, weren't a lot of these like, I mean, when you go back to like before we had plates and dumbbells and barbells, like they were like lifting stones and bales of hay. And like, weren't a lot of these competitions? What was that? What was that Netflix series that you turned me yeah, on? Yeah, it was the Highland Games yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah. A, I mean, when you think of like real world functional type strength, these the movements that they were doing, a lot of them, they didn't even have dumb. They were like rocks, yeah. boulders or stones. And so to me, like what I love about how functional these are, and when I think functional, I think the most carry over into real life. That's it. Like, you know, as much as we we tout uh, how great barbell back squats are, which they are when it comes to CNS, building muscle, burning body fat. Still high level of functional. Yeah, still, yeah, still high level. It still is no, nowhere near as functional as some of these unconventional lifts like we're talking about right now because never once in my life have I taken something loaded on my back and squatted it down like that where there's a lot of times where you'll grab something, pick it up off the ground with one arm and push it up over your head or lift it up on a shelf or put it above a cupboard or hand a bag of some heavy sand to somebody. There's a lot of times where you might find yourself doing these movement patterns a lot more than we might see the, the traditional type of exercise. Yeah, right. And a lot of that has to do with stabilizing certain parts of your body and anchoring yourself while, you know, allowing certain movements to occur. And, and you know, I think of sandbag training and I think of like different unconventional type of, you know, besides rocks and things like that, where, you know, the, the weight might even shift on you. And think about in real life, if you have dog food, if you have cement, if you have, you know, weight isn't always just stationary weight. It, it, it A lot of times it'll move. Move on you. I love that point. I wasn't even thinking about that. And this is so true that like when I think about our strong program and those exercises, you, they, they have so many great uh, anti-rotational components yes. to them, which not a lot of traditional programming addresses that. So unless not you're going all. out and specifically putting in exercises to strengthen rotational movements or anti-rotation, if you're not already aware of that and doing that, these type of lifts force you to get strong in those areas, which are so important to real life strength. Totally. Yep. So here's an example of you know functional versus uh, less less functional versus more functional, right? Like you could get really good on a a machine type of a, a leg press, you know, where you're sitting in a chair and it's you know there's a stack over there and you push the pedals out and you're working your legs, you're getting your muscles stronger versus an exercise like a barbell squat or a walking lunge, because one of them is going to be more like real world. And the other one's like, do you want to just be strong in the gym? Or do you want to be strong uh, all the time? Not only that, but here's the thing too. Um, functional strength tends to be more broad-based strength anyway. Functional strength tends to develop uh, a more balanced physique anyway. It tends to, to give you a better look to your body anyway. Now, I'm, I'm talking about just the average person when they work out. I'm not talking about the roided out bodybuilders. That's a, that's a whole different story. But the average person that works out when they do these unconventional movements and they become more functional, they look better. They look better partially because the body's, when, when they develop their body, it looks like it's put together better, but also because they move better. I mean, we all know those, those you know, muscle bound, you know, meathead type guys that, you know, you, you see them out in the real world, you know, pulling a, a chair out and sitting down at a table or lifting something or opening a door. And you're just like, that just looks awkward. You know, mm -hmm. they don't look like they move very well. Now, of course, they do have a lot of strength, but it's not that functional kind of, you know, uh, dare I say athletic type of, of, of strength that you can get with functional movement. Mm -hmm. um, and unconventional training provides that. It provides that more than your conventional style uh, of, of training, especially isolation movements. Those are not very functional in comparison to the compound type of stuff. But Justin, Justin you mentioned like carrying dog food and stuff. A form of unconventional training would be lifting sandbags. Yep. Sandbags are an excellent form of unconventional training, and it's 
much more like what you would you would encounter in the real world uh, anyway. Now the third one, and this one is this one is is an interesting one, um, and this one connects to the novelty part. When you do something that's different and new, you actually burn more calories. This is an interesting thing that a lot of people don't realize. If you were to take somebody who was an excellent, excellent cyclist, like they're just a trained cyclist, and you measure how many calories that they burn riding for an hour, and then you compare them to somebody who's equally as fit, but not a trained cyclist, somebody who just rides right. a bike. Yeah. I love Watch the, their heart rate just skyrocket. Well, I love the the swimming and biker analogy with this, yes. right? Get a get the highest level swimmer, the highest level cyclist, and that when they do their sport, the both comp- are car- cardiovascular wise in incredible shape, right? right. Both, both of them in great great shape. Uh, but if you make them switch their sports, how unbelievably challenging they would be. You put that cyclist in a pool and ask him to right. swim for an hour, and he's going to be dying, you know, trying to swim for an hour, and 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 vice versa. Even if they weren't necessarily dying because they're fit, they're still burning more calories because their bodies have are not super efficient. Mm-hmm. See, here's the thing about your body: your body's always trying to become as efficient as possible with whatever you do. So, some if you do something a lot your body gets really, really efficient at doing that thing. Unconventional training, when it's novel, it's something you don't do a lot. So you may be a, you know, you may deadlift all the time, burn X amount of calories. Now you go do a Zercher deadlift and your calorie burn goes through the roof. Unconventional training is a great short-term way of burning more body fat. This is a little off topic, but I think it's a good time to make this point because this is the reason why, if you've used our macro calculator, why we recommend that most people go to sedentary regardless if you have a a very active job if you've been a construction worker for 10 years of your life even though your your body probably is burning more calories than the guy who's sitting at the desk believe it or not your body's gotten so adapted to that and it's so efficient at that that you're not burning as much as you think you're burning or what maybe you were when you first started that job. Mm-hmm. So if you've been doing like a really, really active job and you've been doing that for years, I would always tell clients when we're using like a tool like a macro calculator to still put themselves as sedentary unless they're doing all this outside physical activity. Dude, they did this it. just and I've brought this up on the podcast before. They did this remarkable study on one of the, the, the few remaining modern hunter-gatherer societies uh, that we have in the world today. Obviously, you know, the year 2020, not too many hunter-gatherers exist, but there are some tribes that are out there that live the way that we did, you know, thousands of years ago. And so scientists went to study one of these uh, tribes known as the, the Hadza people. Uh, they're from uh, the Tanz- Tanzania, I believe. And what they wanted to test was to see what their calorie burn was like. Now, they're modern hunter-gatherers. So what's a hunter-gatherer do during the day? Well, they're searching for food. They're walking. They're hunting. They're running. They're they're pulling things out of the ground. They are active all day long. Mm-hmm. Way more active than the average you know, modern Westerner. Way more active, right? So the scientists hypothesized that the Hadza people would be burning two or three times as many calories as the average person. They thought, oh, these, you know, we know we know how they live. They're burning like six, 7,000 calories a day. There's no way. They're running all day long. They're doing all this stuff all day long. There's no way right. they're not burning a ton of calories. Then through some pretty sophisticated technology, they actually tested their calorie burn, their metabolism. And they were shocked hmm. to find that the Hadza people burned just a little bit more calories than the average person, than the average Western couch potato they burn just a little bit more calories. And, and thank God, otherwise they'd be dead. Right, that's <laughs> yeah. the thing. So at first you think to yourself, how is that possible? But then you realize that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Hunter-gatherers do not have access to high-calorie, dense food like we do. They don't have, like, if I want to eat something, I'll eat it. In five minutes, I can have Mexican food, Chinese food. Uh, I can go to a pub. I could do whatever. In five minutes, I can eat pretty much whatever I want. I have access to so much calorie-dense food. Hunter-gatherers did not. Right. They didn't have this access. So the human body evolved to learn how to be efficient. And so this, this tribe, through all their activity and movement, that they are used to, they're adapted to, they, their bodies are efficient. Now, if I went and lived with the tribe, I would burn 6,000 calories yeah. a day. <laughs> but if I did it for 10, 15 years, I, my body Eventually would, you'd adapt. It would become like theirs. Right. So it's just a great study to illustrate how efficient you get with your calorie burn when you exercise and how unconventional training 
can spark the heck out of that. So well, your 60 ca- you know minute workout all of a sudden is burning as many calories as a 90 minute workout. Well, and back to the point that I was making earlier about, you know, doing a tricep push down versus, you know, a skull crusher is is novel. It's different. It's a different right. stimulus, but the difference is so close that the the benefits that you get from a calorie expenditure is very very yeah. small. It does, your body doesn't recognize that as really novel. Sure, it's a little novel because it's a different movement, different plane. Different angle. Right, right different angle. So, okay, mm-hmm. my body recognizes it's a little novel. Sure, it's a little more challenge. Sure, it kicks up a little bit more calorie expenditure. But it's not like the difference between a skull crusher and a circus press. Yeah. Right. You know, that is that is so novel, so different. And then and then when with movements that are like in strong – the, the, all of them, or most of them, are these full body movements that, that it, the whole body needs to speak to each other. Everything from your the way your feet are gripping the ground to the ends of your fingertips, the way you're holding on that weight, and your core being able to stabilize through the entire movement. So much is having to communicate, and it's so different and novel to whatever else that you've been used to doing that you see a huge difference in calories. Oh, yeah, so another that, thing I, I really love about uh, strongman training is that when when they when they do heavy carries uh, where they round their back, and and re- reason oh, yeah. being is because we're always taught to never round our back in any kind of uh, heavy lifting situation, which you know is is great in terms of technique, like uh, being solid and being you know, you know supported uh, for your spine, but. You know, come real life, there's there's lots of times where you have to grab something that you know you're just gonna have to bear hug that into your body and round your back in order to even make that possible. So and there's a way to strengthen that, and that's something that you know you need, really need to consider. Oh, heavy carries, you know, pick up a heavy sandbag, hug that thing, and then walk for distance. Your your shoulder blades are spread forward because your upper back is rounded, and you're strengthening those muscles in a completely different position. Um, you want to talk about developing your back. My gosh, if if every back exercise you do focuses like if you deadlift and always focus on keeping your shoulders back like you should, doing something like this is totally different. Watch what happens. Which brings me to the next point. Unconventional training strengthens all your weak links. You don't even know you have them. Yeah. Right now, you're listening right now, you're like, what are you talking about? I work out all the time. I train my whole body. I don't have any weak links. You sure about that? Yeah. Go, I tell you what, first time I learned about this, I did some uh some uh, clubs for my shoulders, club training. And I realized that my shoulders had some weak links. Mm-hmm. They weren't the rotational stability and strength wasn't what I thought they were. Even though I did rotator cuff training and I did overhead presses and laterals and all these other exercises, doing unconventional training with the clubs made me realize that I had some weak links in my shoulders. A lot of people's weak links might be their hands. Do some heavy farmer walks and you'll figure that out real quick, that that's the thing that's weakest. All these small supportive muscles – um, oftentimes are just they're not as strong as they could be because you've gotten really good at the exercises you do all the time. Yeah, and, and it's difficult at first. It seems like, why is this so hard? But it does expose those weak links in, in the kinetic chain, and it's great to address those things because, you know, the, the payout is now it translates going back into, you know, like something that's loaded equally, you know, with a barbell. Man, your lifts go up. All of a sudden now I can lift even more weight because I've – put the work in on these other you know like parts of of my lifts like with my joints now they're supported and i'm able to then you know drive more force output there well when i think of weak links when we talk about unconventional training what i think the majority suffer from uh, in regards to weak links is the full body communication mm. uh, most exercises that we do in the gym aside from the good compound lifts that we all talk about uh, which most are done in the sagittal plane. You're not moving in, in, in multiple planes, and you're not having to do a lot of anti-rotational stuff. Uh, for the most part, we do a lot of isolation-type exercises. You know, we're, we're focusing just on that body part. And when you do these unconventional lifts, most all of them require this full-body communication. Yeah. And that's where the breakdown is. Sure, maybe a circus, maybe I have great shoulders. Maybe I could sit in a military press and military press 225. But ask me to rip the dumbbell on one side up from the floor, stabilize, and then press over my head, just completely different. And 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 I and the breakdown, like I can't do nowhere near. If I could military press 225, but then all of a sudden I go to a circus press and 75-pound single dumbbell is really, really hard to do. So that's where I think most people listening are, I would say, and speaking to the you know avid gym goer, mm. 
where their weak link is, is the ability for the entire body to communicate well, really well and strong together. Let's focus in on that lift specifically, right? The circus press. So I'm taking it from the ground and bringing it up over my head. Okay, to do that, let's let's think about your average like person that's lifting what they would be doing a uh, bent over row, and then transitioning up into an upright position and stabilizing my spine with my core, and now pressing it overhead. Now I have to put all that together and make it a fluid movement in in one go and be stabilized and not you know throw my back out of whack. So totally. there's a lot going on there. Totally. Here's something else you need to know about weak links: your body has safeguards that prevent it from being too strong or building too much muscle and the safeguards are typically the weak links okay so it's like a car uh with a rev limiter or let's say you have a car with 600 horsepower but the car can sense that using all 600 horsepower is going to break the axle so it only exerts 300 horsepower your body does this as well you may have a capacity to lift let's say 300 pounds but your body uh it, it picks up that there's a weak link in the chain and that, you know, that 300 pound lift might hurt me. So I'm only going to let you lift 200 pounds. You don't even realize this is happening. I, I remember the first time this happened to me. You know, when I was a kid, the, the lift that everybody compared was the bench press. That was the lift, right? Yeah, it's a how, standard. Yeah, how much can you bench? And I remember getting stuck, and I don't remember what the weight was. I got stuck at some weight, and I, it wasn't budging, and I couldn't figure it out. And then I read this article on this device that strengthened the rotator cuff. I think it was called the shoulder horn. It was this weird looking thing that you put your arms in. And I started reading articles about the rotator cuff, and then someone did a good job of communicating that your lack of strength in your rotator cuff may be what's preventing you from lifting more weight. And I thought, that's kind of weird. My shoulders don't hurt, but let me give this a shot anyway and see what happens. I, I gained 10 pounds on my bench press almost instantly yeah. because I my body sensed that that weak link now was a little stronger, and now it could allow me to exert more force and more strength. So you have these, trust me, you have these weak links, especially if you do the same exercises all the time. You just don't know it. Try unconventional lifts, and you're going to find areas of your body getting sore, and you're going to feel areas of your body that you normally never feel. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had people do, do squats, and I change their position, have them go a little lower, and they feel in their calves mm -hmm. because that was the weak link in their positioning, for example. So uh, unconventional lift, lifts puts pressure on those weak links in different ways, forces them to get stronger, which then increases your capacity for strength and for performance and for muscle for the rest of your body. And all of this makes it fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really does. It, Challenging. It, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's probably why I say that I pull from this program more than any other program. I really enjoy training these movements now. Something that I was intimidated to do for most of my career because, oh, I've never done this before. I'm not sure. I don't want to look like a fool when I do it. To now, like really, really enjoying. In fact, so there is. To, I mentioned earlier, or on another episode, I talked about how you know sometimes uh, I'll just go to the gym and just squat, you know, and that's all I'll do. Sometimes I'll just go and, and circus press, or I'll just go, you know, snatch grip deadlift and just get good because they're such high skill level mm -hmm. exercises and they're full body, entire body communicating. Uh, sometimes I just love going to the gym and practicing them and getting really good, and then I leave feeling like I got a great workout because everything gets stimulated. So. I think it's a, it's a lot of a lot of fun to train this way, especially if you've never trained this way. Totally, before. it's it's different. It's fun, and here's the fun part for me. So I'll tell you that, and this is kind of silly, but this is what I like about unconventional lifting. You know, I've been working out for so long now that you know I know what my potential is for the major lifts. I know what I've done in the past. You know, at this point, you know, adding five pounds to a lift is like a big deal because I've been doing it for so long. So I'm kind of hitting that limit or whatever. But when I do unconventional lifts because they're different, because they're new and I have to learn them, my strength gains on them are crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'll do a snatch grip deadlift and, you know, the first few times I'm doing it, I'm kind of getting used to it and figuring out the positioning. Now I know what to fire. And I'm adding like 10, 15 pounds each time mm -hmm. because my CNS is responding because it's a new thing that I'm doing. Now, if you, if you can you tell me that your body's not going to have crazy results if you're not adding that kind of weight every time you work out? Now, of course, it doesn't happen all the time. It's not indefinite. But when you do a new exercise, initially that capacity for improvements is so big, mainly because you suck at it the first time you do it. Yeah, it's that's it's it's. I've almost got addicted to it, and, and this is this 
is very similar to how I got into mobility training as well. Uh, it was just understanding uh, that uh, what I wasn't doing, um, it, like I was so I was so weak in those areas, and I, I couldn't understand why. Like I I just wasn't doing these types of movements. And then once I started to incorporate, uh, you know, more mobility, my joints start to feel like my end ranges were strong, gain range of motion, but also gain stability and strength. Uh, then immediately that applied to my regular lifts. I just felt even more capable. My form was better. My body didn't shift as much as it used to. I could hold the weight for longer. Uh, you know, unconventional training is like is is much like that. I'm 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 really exposing all these different planes of motion uh, simultaneously, and I'm loading in ranges, and so my body just has to account for that, and and it has to get stronger to account for the load being in a different position and so your body just naturally will will have to rise to the occasion now we're talking about all the things that are really fun about training this way i, I do want to address why we're talking about fun the, all the things that are unfun and one of the unfun parts about this is understanding how to program design it uh when i think back to all the programs that we created i would say strong was probably one of the more challenging ones for us to piece together and figure out aside from the fact that none of us were strong men and didn't train that way for years and years and years. And that's why we enlisted someone like Robert Oberus to come in and support us when we wrote it. What we understand was it was programming really well. And you know, when you're trying to put together a program that is incorporating all these un unconventional lifts, you do want to think about how you insert them into a workout. Yeah, a big challenge is like, you know, where does a farmer walk go? You know, where does a uh, Zercher yeah. deadlift go? Is that Does it go upper? back day? Yeah, is that yeah. back or yeah. is that leg? And I think or... this is why a lot of people avoid That's why I want to address this yes. because I think there's a lot of people that are like, oh, yeah, okay, that sounds good. It's or, because uh, most people, when they understand, you know, what most people understand about workout programming is chest exercises, back exercises, shoulder exercises. Yeah. And it's hard to, like a Turkish get up. Where do you put that in your routine? You're kind of doing everything. Mm -hmm. So you're right. Uh, it's more like loaded movement. So if you just think of yeah. it as I'm training movement and my whole body has to work together uh, versus training specific body parts, like that's a little bit more close. Yeah, I would say exactly what Justin just said. Um, rather than focusing on body parts, focus on movement. So here I'm lifting, here I'm squatting, here I'm doing some pushing and some pulling type stuff. And of course, if you want um, all that guesswork, taken out, um, as Adam said, we created uh, Map Strong, which is full of unconventional exercises, and it's an unconventional workout, um, and uh, it's it's become one of the favorites. It's a, it was it's funny. It was a dark horse. You know, we didn't know how people By would respond. Females, yeah, it's Women like it's love like it. it's like our number one oh, program I know. for females, which I blew, that really surprised me. Blew my mind because it's, it's posterior chain heavy, uh, a lot could, of butt, yeah, stuff. Yeah, Katrina yeah, yeah. loved it. I mean, every, everybody I've talked to, and I was was not ready for that. I mean, honestly, when we wrote it, uh, I was thinking of like the dudes that like really love strongman training, but totally. it's become one of our most popular programs. For, yeah, same for, girls. for Jessica. Yeah, it's her, it's her absolute favorite program, and then second place is maps anabolic so um so you can get that program it's it's 50 percent off uh, all month long you go to mapsstrong.com that's m-a-p-s-s-t-r-o-n-g and then use the code strong 50 for the discount that's s-t-r-o-n-g five zero without a space also we record the podcast on video as well as audio so if you like listening to us imagine how much you like looking at us yeah uh, oh, just go, oh yeah go to youtube uh mind pump podcast also you can find us on instagram you can find justin at mind pump justin you can find me at mind pump sal and adam at mind pump adam i'm gonna tell you guys something right now i'm just gonna and this is just you know i'm gonna vent a little bit today's the last day i try to work out with you guys sorry i'm gonna have to break up with you guys <laughs> oh, in terms of working out oh, you are just a bunch of slackers i tell you what <laughs> i knew if i waited for you guys it wouldn't happen dude you still have, so mad you still have these childhood insecurities around no, your working no, out i you do you